I'm Matt Selleck with the 100 Mile Arts Network. Welcome back to another edition of Art to Heart, the video podcast series where I interview artists and artisans from across the Utoa region. Today, we meet with Potter Kate Douglas. Originally from the area, she spent many years working, teaching, and practicing her craft in England and France before finally heeding the call to come back home to the hills. We speak with her today at her home studio in Chelsea. Let's meet Kate. Yeah. Hey Kate. Hey Matt. How's it going? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me here in your beautiful shop. Yeah, it's nice to have someone here. It's been a long time since yeah. people have come in. Yeah. So uh, how did you end up here? How did you end up living in the Gatineau Hills, living, working in the Gatineau Hills? So I grew up here and then moved away for 20 years and came back. Um, but this is where I first started pottery actually. And then I left and did some other things, but clay was always a theme, so. Where'd you go? Like people often leave here, go somewhere else, and mm. then they feel a call of, yeah, this, yeah. of the area, you know, pulling them back in again. So what, where, where, did, where did things take you? I went out to BC at first, um, where I have family and stayed out there like on Vancouver Island and some of the Gulf Islands and then I did a ceramic program in Nelson, um, BC and then met my partner and we went to Europe for just under a decade and then the call came to come back home where family is. And Europe, where'd you go in Europe? Uh, France in the Pyrenees and then Bristol, England for quite a long time. And did you do art while you were there? Like, were you working? Yeah, in, uh... in the Pyrenees, I worked in a little pottery studio. Uh, it was neat. They had different tools than I used, so that was that was really neat. Um, and then in, well, I was doing other work as well. Actually, I couldn't work there for money because I didn't get my paperwork sorted beforehand. So Oliver, my partner, could work there, and I was doing. Uh, working in a pottery and also volunteering on a goat farm high in the mountains and it was really neat. So what was your introduction to pottery? Ah, so it was here as a kid. There are really good potters in this area. Like even as a kid, there's Carol Fromovich, Maureen Marcotte, David McKenzie, um, another artist, oh, I'm forgetting his name, Jim Thompson. He was my first pottery teacher in Chelsea as a kid and he spoke to us like we were humans not like we were children he really let us free with the clay it was amazing and then I worked with Carol as a teenager while she was my teacher and then David and Maureen and that was my start and then I went out and I worked in a co-op on um, Cortez Island for a while and went to an art school in Nelson where I tried other things. I was like, okay, no, I'm going to do something that doesn't need so much equipment. And I, anyway, I did do other programs, but clay just kept pulling me back. And it's a really calming, beautiful thing to do. And I was, yeah, it's a very warm medium, even though I think people assume it's going to be cold because there's water and muck and, but it's very warm. Anyway, I love it. So it just kept pulling me back and I'm a potter, despite my efforts to do other things. <laughs> I, ha I paint as well, which is why there's a lot of painterly yeah, application to my work. But yeah, and it's just the function of it. And food. Food's always been my other side gig and lately gardening. And they just all go together. Like what holds your food? Anyway, yeah. Well, what, uh, that's awesome. Well, what are, like... What was, I mean, you described it a little bit, but what was it about that like, you tried other art forms, you know, you, were, you, you, you enjoyed painting, you do it, mm. but what was it about clay that just kept pulling you back in as a medium? Yeah, interesting. It was the first time I found myself being precise about something. Um, I also love that there are different stages. It's never boring. You know, I make the piece, set it, get the handles. That's another day of, you know, putting handles on mugs. And then there's the decorating, there's the firing, the glazing. There's just so many different elements that I never get bored. Um, and yeah, throwing of pots, it is, it feels so good to me. And then so, it triggers something else, you know, when I'm painting them, when I'm doing the decorative art. What is the throwing of pots when you describe that? Oh, like sorry. That? Okay, right. So, um, ball of clay and wheel, getting it on there, centering it. And really, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but you know, centering a bit of clay also would center me and 
you have to be really still and oh uh, yeah I'd lose uh, when I first started there were years where I'd lose time in doing the action and that was really nice you know when you love something mm. and you just lose yourself in it so, yeah um well tell me a little bit about like what is it when you're when you're delving into working with with pottery like what what's your creative process like like what is it that you're trying to achieve what are you you know what's your exploration like with that interesting hmm well actually lately i'm just trying to make i guess i'm trying to make pieces sing trying to and what i mean by that is that it just seems like a balanced piece and then whatever decoration i put on it that it fits the body and so it's just yeah um that is the thing I'm playing with on my own. Lately, I've been trying to make backgammon boards. I think you saw some outside. Mm -hmm. This pandemic, you know, we've, as a family, we've been playing a lot more games. And I don't know, like, I don't have a lot of time to play. Um, and I would, at some point, like to play bigger. But um, in terms, yeah, especially over these two years, you know, when I get time to make, I really have to put my head down and make. And then the... The fun creative bit comes in the decorating. Um, so what am I trying to explore? I guess I just want the pieces to be simple and enjoyable for the user, but also for it all to fit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the decorating and the piece and I, w I guess just that it would sing as a piece. Mm. Uh, yeah. So these pieces are, I mean, a lot of the work you do is, is functional, right? It's functional yeah. art, right? So it's around like bowls, cups, that sort of thing. Yeah. Is it all like that? Or did you, is there other pieces that other kinds of work? To, yeah, you... um, I do do flat, flatwares with paintings on them. Um, there is a piece that you will find on my Instagram mm. that I just posted of a tree and that kind of more painterly paysage um but i've been struggling with it a little bit because i have a new body of clay i've been trying different clay bodies and i've done quite a few pieces and they've cracked so um this is something that i did at one point really successfully and i'm no longer it seems able to or my clay body is i haven't got it right yet because they keep cracking so mm. To be to be dis determined. To be determined. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, like as an artist, I still paint on, yeah, not clay. Yeah. So trying to marry the two, mm -hmm. yeah, canvas or wood, but instead of being on clay, and it's very different because I'm not using paints out of a paint box or crayons. You know, you have to mix oxides, ground up, yeah, minerals with the clay and wet it down and use that for painting. Um, yeah. It's a very involved process. There. It is. Yeah. And there's science in it, you know, mixing the glazes and weighing stuff out. Yeah, it's yeah. a neat, it's, there's a lot of elements to it. And that's part of the fun, of course. It is, yeah. <laughs> you, became yeah. Like a, you become like a, a bit of a mad wizard with these things. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned about the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the last year and a half uh, plus has been trying on anyone in the arts community. Um, What's it been like for you? You mentioned a little bit that you had time, you know, with family to explore games, but like if, if for your art, uh, what, what has it meant for your art this last year and a half? Well, um, I suppose I don't have enough, as much time to get lost in it. You know, I talked about that meditative. Uh, when I get to the studio, it's really business. Um, it's been a tricky time because I have two kids and school closures are just classroom closures. And so it's really a uh, surrender. It's been a year and a half of surrender and uh, what's important, you know, it's definitely the happiness of humans mm -hmm. in the family, in the community, so a lot of energy going there. Yeah, but this is what's good for me, you know, self-feeding, it's coming down to the studio and making some things, but it's, I've suffered in the sense of, I feel like I'm really not um, keeping up my end of the bargain, there are a few places that sell my work and I'm just not able to stock them mm -hmm. enough. And then wanting to do things like the studio tour, which just happened, and we're scrambling to get enough work. Yeah, mm. but I think people are understanding. And yeah, you know, there are people out there who are like, "Where do I put my hot soup, Kate? <laughs> Kate to the rescue!" <laughs> yeah, I've got some hot water. My they... mugs hold water. It's one thing. And when they get to the bottom of the bowl, they get to see the beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me, tell me about teaching. 
Um, like, what's mm. that process like? Because it's entirely different. Uh, it's a whole different component of being, you know, uh, an artist is, is teaching your art, sharing yeah, your passion. Yeah, passing it on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a trick. So I taught for uh, seven years in England in a, in a really neat environment where I was a technician and a, one of four teachers. And that, I mean, you, I get people who are not able to be in their hands at all. So, you know, there's one thing about teaching, this is how we're going to make a pot, but to get people's presence into their fingertips, because that's really what you need, or to be centered enough, you know, to, to get a piece um, going properly. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that I had students who would come back year after year and not able to make a pot on the wheel. Mm. But beautifully, there are other ways to, you know, making slab forms. And I do feel like it can be a medium for anyone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I love it. I love passing on the knowledge and my passion for it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Well, hey, thanks for having me here and chatting with me today. And, uh, and I, a great studio in, in Farm Point. This is a beautiful place to be. So thank you for having uh, invited me to your home. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. We'll talk soon. Yay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is good coffee or tea. Mm -hmm.